Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation EVGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a really interesting team that just won a 100 plus person online grassroots tournament. It's a stall-oriented team that has super bulky Pokemon like Shelter, Hisu, and Gudra, Calm Mind, Sinistra, and Binding Band, Toxapex. Toxapex is a Pokemon that's seen very little play in competitive VGC, but this set is really incredible. You're able to trap your opponents in with Infestation and deal 1 6 of their HP through Binding Band at the end of each turn, and this team is really difficult to knock out because you've got so many means of recovery, such as Life Dew plus Leftovers on Hisu and Gudra, Sinistra with Citrus Berry and Matcha Gacha, and Recover plus Regenerator on the Toxapex. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoyed, would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Before we get started, today's video is sponsored by Ugreen. Ugreen makes incredible wall chargers. Ever since getting one, I've completely replaced my old traditional wall charger. I love my Nexode RG65 watt charger for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's incredibly fast. I can charge my iPhone from 0-60% to 60 in 30 minutes, whereas a traditional charger takes longer than that. In addition, with one USB-A and two USB-C ports, it's really easy for me to charge my phone, my AirPods, my Nintendo Switch, and or my laptop all at the same time. Second of all, the charger is just adorable. It comes with a display that indicates the charging status of my devices, and it even changes once my device is fully charged. When you're not using it as a charger, it doubles down as a cute standing robot with a shoe pin cover. Just look at how well it gets along with Piplup. Ugreen also has a 30 watt charger if you want a lower power and cheaper alternative to the 65 watt option. If you're interested, you can get your own using the promotional link down below, and you can get an additional 28% off from orders from November 23rd to 27th. A huge thank you to you, Green, and these adorable little chargers once again for sponsoring today's video. First of all, like I mentioned, this team won a tournament with over 100 players in it. It ended up having 9 wins and just 1 loss throughout the run. You can check out the results for the tournament linked down in the description below. And it really drew my eye, of course, because of Toxapex in particular. This is a Pokemon I would not have expected to even see in the top 16 of a tournament, let alone win an entire tournament. I've just really never seen it used in competitive VGC before, so it really drew my attention. And I think super bulky slash stall oriented strategies that feature things like Toxapex and Hisu and Gudra just aren't very meta right now. I think a lot of the meta teams either revolve around really strong offense like Tornadus, Tailwind, setup oriented strategies like Golden Go Nasty Plot, or balanced teams like Rory Moon Balance, for example. And so to see this team rise all the way to the top, I think was very fascinating. And I think it makes a lot of sense because some of these Pokemon have incredible anti-meta matchups. And so, yeah, just wanted to highlight the tournament real quick. Breaking things down, as always, Rental, Pace, and Team Creator are linked down in the description below. And question of the day, I want to know what your favorite strategy to use in VGC at the moment is. Before diving into the specifics of the team, I just want to highlight that this team plays very differently from most teams that you're probably used to seeing in competitive VGC. Stall slash super bulky strategies like this generally don't see too much play, and part of the reason is that people just don't explore those strategies as much, but they're not necessarily the easiest to use as well, because in a format where you can pick up so many big one-hit knockouts, this team is far from that. So, it takes a while to get the hang of, it certainly took me a long time to really understand, especially how to use Toxapex in particular, but once you get the hang of it, I think it actually matches up super well into a lot of common Pokemon and teams in the format. The first Pokemon I want to talk about, of course, then, is Toxapex. This Pokemon has not really seen much use in VGC throughout all of its years of existence because while it's super bulky, it just doesn't really deal damage. And so historically, part of the problem is that Toxapex would be on the field, and yeah, maybe it could soak up damage, but all your opponents would have to do is ignore the Toxapex and target what's next to it. What makes this set really interesting is Binding Band in particular. This allows you to deal 1 6 of your opponent's damage each turn with trapping moves, so infestation, instead of 1 8. Now, if you played VGC in Sword and Shield, you'll know that the Gigantamax Gen 1 starter evolutions were incredible. Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur, Charizard in particular. Part of the reason is because you would be able to get this residual damage at the end of each turn, and infestation essentially does the same amount of damage. One thing to note about infestation is that there are a lot of mechanics that you have to remember when using it. First of all, you can see it traps and damages your opponents for 4 to 5 turns, and so it's not guaranteed to be 5 turns. 
Second of all, if you switch out your Toxapex, you break the Infestation Trap, allowing your opponent to switch out. Ghost-type Pokemon are also immune to being trapped in by Infestation, so keep that in mind. When I first picked up this team, I was like, oh, I'll just trap my opponent's Fluttermane in with Infestation, and then heavy slam them with Gudra, but then they just switched out Fluttermane. I was like, okay, yeah, that was probably good to remember. The general idea, of course, behind Toxapex, though, is that you stay in the field, you soak up damage, you heal back, substitute's really nice in order to be able to survive for longer as well, and the combination of Infestation plus Baneful Bunker is awesome. Baneful Bunker protects you from moves, but also, if your opponent uses a contact move against you, they'll be poisoned, and so there are a lot of endgames where Toxapex can just win a 1v1 against something that is physically oriented, because you get the Infestation, you get them poisoned, and then you just stall out with Recover. Dragon Terra is one of the best defensive Terras in the game right now, so not really too surprising to see it here. And Regenerator, of course, is an amazing ability on Toxapex as well. But keep in mind, if you are getting the healing, that means you're switching out, and that's going to break the Infestation Trap. Otherwise, this Toxapex is just super bulky, very difficult to get a one-hit knockout on, and can just really be a huge nuisance for your opponent. The next Pokemon to talk about is Hisuian Gudra. Hisu and Grudra, I think, is a really good anti-meta Pokemon right now, and that's because we're playing a format that is very physically oriented, with Pokemon like Lander's Therian and Iron Hands, for example, being very common. The idea behind Hisu and Gudra is that it can just set up against these physically oriented Pokemon with Shelter, and can very quickly deal massive amounts of damage with Body Press. There are a lot of other Iron Defense Body Press users that have been used, and we've seen Como, for example, win a regional championship in this format, Torterra, something that I featured on the channel as well, but... What makes Gudra awesome is the Heavy Slam. This allows you to hit things like Fluttermane. Fluttermane in particular is a big thing to deal damage to because it's still one of the most common Pokemon in the format. And you're able to heal a lot with Life Dew and the Leftovers as well. This Gudra, I think, can run either Sapsipper or Shell Armor. Sapsipper is nice on this set because it gives you immunity to things like Amoongus as well as Rillaboom and Grass-type attacks from Ogre Pond. And so it's nice because it combines quite well with Water Terra as well. And generally... The idea behind Gudra is that you are just super bulky defensively, and you already have great base special defense. So, you can invest more in HP and defense specifically. And the idea with this Pokemon often is to just shelter once, twice, even three times, and then start body pressing everything. To enable Gudra, you've got Grimmsnarl. This Grimmsnarl is cool, because if you saw this team on paper, you would probably expect Light Clay on Grimmsnarl, but you've actually got Covert Cloak on this set. Part of the idea behind Covert Cloak is that the easiest way to shut down Grimmsnarl is to click Fake Out onto it on turn 1 and then just knock it out with something that's super effective, like Iron Hands plus Fluttermane, for example, normally a really good duo into Grimmsnarl. This set, in Closed Team Sheet Best of 1, is so nasty because so many opponents will Fake Out Grimmsnarl on turn 1, you'll still get your attack off, and it just gives you so much more value. The moveset is fairly standard, the one thing to note is that instead of Reflect, you've got Taunt, Part of the theory here is that you've got really defensive Pokemon anyway, so you don't necessarily need Reflect. Light Screen's valuable because Gudra doesn't have any special defense investment, so it's good for that. Taunt is really cool as a surprise move as well, but I can't tell you how good this Covert Cloak is in catching your opponents off guard in closed team sheet environments. So, Gudra plus Grimstyle, really effective lead. Grim and Toxapex is interesting, where you can just go for Infestation immediately, start disrupting your opponent, set up a Light Screen, then Parting Shot, bring out Gudra, Toxapex has trapped something in, and then Gudra can start setting up. Calmine Sinisha also exists on this team, and I think this is a really interesting set, because Sinisha already has a pretty decent base special attack, and you can use it, of course, for healing with Hospitality, but Calm Mind can add up very quickly as well. So the idea is against more specially oriented teams than against teams that take a while to get going, Sinisha can just start setting up. I love using this especially against Trick Room oriented teams, so you start clicking Calm Mind and then you heal back massive amounts with Machigacha and Citrus Berry as well. And Rage Powder is nice just to protect things like Gudra and Toxapex a little bit more. To round out the team, you've got Landers Therian with Choice Scarf as well as Iron Hands with Assault Vest. These are both fairly standard sets that are used in the format right now, and they provide good disruption and utility. Iron Hands with Fake Out and Volt Switch Pressure and Landers to get Intimidate off. This can also be a really effective late game closer with Flying Terra, Terra Blast, but a lot of times you can lead something like Grim Landers, get it Intimidate off, U-Turn, pivot out into something like Gudra Toxapex, and then go from there. When using this team, I think I generally index very heavily on Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl's utility is just absolutely amazing. And I often ask myself about how I can utilize Toxapex to the best of its ability. Toxapex certainly has its weaknesses. It doesn't love going up against ground-type attackers and psychic-type attackers. But in a lot of matches, I'm thinking, okay, does my opponent have something that can hit Toxapex? If they lead something that's not super good, is do I have the ability to just trap something in and slowly disrupt them? Those are all questions I'm asking. 
One other thing you have to figure out when using this team is how to actually deal enough damage to win the game because Toxapex and Grimstar are super passive. Toxapex, of course, gets the residual damage, but it takes a long time to get going. So normally Gudra ends up being a heavy amount of offense just through the shelter combination. And then bringing one of Iron Hands and Landris is valuable since these are just really strong attackers, even without max attack investment. But I think about leads like Grimstar or Gudra, Grimstar or Toxapex. Uh, you can even go Grim Sinistra if you think you can start calm minding immediately. And then you, of course, have Iron Hands and Landris. Like Hands Landris in itself is a great lead. Hands Gudra is a great lead. Landris plus Sinistra, Gudra, Toxapex, I think are all viable as well. So it's really trying to figure out how am I going to distribute damage and how am I going to get it set up properly with Gudra and Sinistra as well as Toxapex in particular. So yeah, that's it for a quick breakdown. Now let's highlight some weaknesses. In terms of weaknesses, the first thing to call out is Nasty Plot Golden Go. That set in general can set up very easily against this team and then deal massive amounts of damage, and you're going to struggle to knock it out quickly. The answers to it are going to be using Landorus and Iron Hands, and you can force a tear out of Golden Go. Gudra then can body press it, which is nice, but uh, it's one of the biggest weaknesses for this team. Otherwise, things to watch out for. First of all, ground type damage in general, which is super effective against half the team, and to hands Gudra and Toxapex. I don't think physical ground damage is actually that scary. Something like Stomping Tantrum from Landris on the opposing side doesn't scare me too much with Intimidate here and with Parting Shot. But I think that strong special ground damage in particular has been really tough to deal with. So that can be things like Earth Power from things like Heatran or even Landris Incarnate, for example. And the general idea is that you can just deal decent amounts of damage and force a tear out of something. One other thing to think about is that special damage just has a lot of value against this team since Gudra doesn't have special defense investment. So I've had games where I've set up with Gudra and I'm like, oh, wow, I've sheltered, I've gotten a plus six defense. But the inability to protect plus no special defense investment means that if your opponent stalls out the light screen on Grimstar, for example, they can very aggressively target down Gudra. So for example, I think I had one match where I took some chip damage, I was set up, but then my opponent positioned in Fluttermane, Fairy Terra, and then just went for Choice Specs Moonblast, and then Gudra just fainted. That felt really bad. So you're going to want to watch out for that in particular. Toxapex, I think, is a double-edged sword because Wall can be incredible. Sometimes it's just absolute dead weight and stays on the field and provides very little value. There are things that can break out of the infestation trap, ghost-type Pokemon in particular as well. So keep that in mind. It can feel pretty bad if you feel like you've gotten your opponent locked in, but then they're able to just pivot out as well. And Toxapex is weak to a couple of common types like Ground, like Psychic, like Electric. So you can utilize those potentially for super effective damage as well. I think the inability to protect on Gudra, Grimstar, and Sid is just something that you can take advantage of and just launch really consistent damage as well. And overall, I think... Couple of other things that have given me trouble taunt onto things like Gudra, Toxapex, and Sinistra can be really annoying because it prevents the setup from snowballing. I also ran into Encore a couple of times, and that's pretty niche, but Encore Ranguru and Encore Iron Bundle both caused some trouble. I played against one team that had Ursaluna, Blood Moon, and they were able to set up Trick Room. I was Encore, and then Blood Moon just was able to sweep through my team very quickly with Hyper Voice. So it speaks to the strength of special damage in particular with this team. I think you're very well matched against most physical attackers in the format. One other thing to consider is that Gudra does not have the shell armor, so critical hits can happen. And so crits in general can be really scary for this team to deal with in general as well. Something like Dark or Shifu can apply massive amounts of offensive pressure early as well. So yeah, that's it for a quick breakdown. Let's get into these games. All right, we've got Indy, Arm Rouge, Urshifu, Roaring Moon, Fluttermane, and Iron Hands. Indity Armor Reach is pretty scary, especially for Toxapex. A lot of special attackers. Pretty easy to set up Light Screen with Grim, which is nice. Thinking about Grim Landorus as a lead. I think like late game Landorus can be really strong here. Alternatively, Grim Gudra works. Uh, Toxapex can be a very valuable endgame Pokemon, 1v1. I think I'll bring Landorus here. If I'm leading, bringing Landorus though, I honestly really like leading it, so... Okay, I'm gonna go Grim Landorus, Gudra, Toxapex. The main idea here is that they do have a lot of offense that threatens things like Gudra and Toxapex, so... I wanna put on some pressure early on. Like, one thing to think about is that Landorus and Grimmsnarl can actually pick up knockouts in the early game with the combination of Stomping Tantrum and Sparrow Break. Most people, when they see Scarf Landorus, they just expect a U-turn out, which I think is a very fair assumption. But 
if we can get a knockout in the early game, that can snowball us potentially afterwards. So that's kind of the idea here. Let's see what they go with, though. Iron Hands and Urshifu, and it's Water Urshifu. Okay. Works for me. Having the Covert Cloak here is quite nice on the Grim. It's interesting, though, because I'm actually thinking about just clicking Spirit Break right away onto Urshifu. We have a lot of possible options here, but I'm actually interested in Spirit Break and then switching out into Toxapex. Because I have the Covert Cloak, and I think Landris applies pressure here, so if you're my opponent, you might want to like double up on a Landris, but how much do they respect for, uh, the Grimstar right now is my question. Ah, beautiful. They don't Terra here. Perfect. Okay, that's huge. So Toxapex, one of the main reasons to use it in this format is because it's so good into Urshifu. So we soak up that damage wonderfully. Grimstar gets Spirit Break, which should deal a lot of damage here. Amazing. And they're going to heavy slam us, but with ref not reflect, with Intimidate up, we survive. Excellent. Okay. Now I can Infestation into you. So I definitely want to do that. I do think setting up Light Screen is worth it here. So I don't mind just going for it immediately. I, I think I could also Parting Shot into Hands, which allows me to pivot into Landorus. Hmm. I don't hate that option. This could theoretically pivot into NDD. Yeah, I want to make sure I get light screen up. So I'm going to light screen and then infestation into Urshifu. Urshifu switches. Yeah, I would expect NDD to come out here, but let's see. Yep, that's NDD. Cool. That's exactly why I did not want to click parting shot this turn. And now the NDD is trapped in, which is nice, which allows me to pivot in Gudra. With Gudra out, I can go for Shelter now, and then Parting Shot- uh, not Parting Shot, um, Infestation into Iron Hands. One thing to think about- actually, do I want to go into Gudra here? I could go out into Landorus, and then U-turn out into the NDD slot. Uh, the Rocky Helmet, which is good to confirm. Nah, I think we should take advantage of the fact that Light Screen is set up and just start setting up with Gudra. I'm gonna shelter here. Armor should be their last one, right? It could be Fluttermane. Basically, I'm thinking about going for Terra here so that I can trap in. Because I think Iron Hands is gonna switch out here. Okay, I'm down. Infestation hands. And if hand stays in... Oh, they stayed in. That's so good for us. Because now both of your Pokemon will be trapped in. And I can just go for... Wow, this is huge. I can go for Baneful Bunker and then Life Dew. Okay, they're going for Helping Hand. I don't think you KO, though. I'm wondering if it's Wild Charge or Drain Punch, but either way, I get the Shelter Defense boost and I Dragon Terra. So unless you, like, close combated... Yeah, it's just Drain Punch. Okay, perfect. Oh, that is super good for us. The only downside is I committed my Terra, but I think it's worth going for it because uh, Indity having Psychic is not out of the uh, unordinary. Out of the ordinary, sorry. And um, now... Both of my opponent's Pokemon are trapped in, which is phenomenal for us. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I think here I'm okay going for another shelter. This is great because we're going to be able to stall out their Psychic Train as well, which is phenomenal for us. So I'm happy to go for another shelter right now. And should be able to survive the attacks from their end and just get a recover off. So I'm down for recover. I think we've trapped our opponent into a really tough spot. Uh, Iron Hand staying in and allowing me to go for infestation onto that slot was such a big deal. And we have so much healing with this duel. So the ideal is that we come out of this with plus six defense. Gudra. 
Okay, they go for Helping Hand, but I don't think Drain Punch is going to KO the Toxapex. But maybe it was worth going for Baneful Bunker there just to be a little bit safer. Oh, but they just keep targeting Gudra. That's beautiful for us. Okay, amazing. I am more than okay with that. And now Toxapex recovers as well, which is huge. One thing to think about is that the Urshifu is basically two infestation turns away from getting knocked out as well. So if I set up a sub, I'll be able to click infestation into that, and that's huge. So this is like the perfect setup. Could not have asked for things to play out any better right now. Uh, the main thing we want to be aware of is we want to make sure we heal as well. So here I'm happy to life do. Maybe I'll go for one more shelter. Mm. They'll probably go for the same helping hand play. I don't mind life doing right now. And then substituting. Yeah, they're just going to keep going for helping hand during punch, which makes sense. I want to see... I should have paid a little bit better attention to exactly how much damage they did last turn. So we start this turn at 103. Yeah, so we end up the, uh, with more HP than we started, which is exactly what we're looking for. Perfect. The one thing to think about is that the infestation bound will end at some point, right? So it's not like it's permanent. So I got to keep that in mind. But I'm perfectly happy in this situation as Gudra ends with 20 more HP than it started the turn with. Okay. More damage on a bolt. I do think I should go for the knockout onto NDD right now. Um, hmm, this turn's interesting because we know they have Urshifu in the back. That's going to be able to come in and just click close combat. So I actually maybe think I'd rather shelter again here and then infestation into NDD. Yep, so now we're plus six defense. Green Punch does 30 damage. Nice. That's with helping hand support, too. My goodness. Get Infestation as well. So they survive here. Uh, which is fine. Yeah, I think what's really awkward for them here is just like, you can't really switch until Infestation ends, and Indity's Infestation does finally end, but if you switch, whatever comes in just gets trapped, right? So Light Screen finally wears off, but that's fine. Terrain also disappears. I think this turn is interesting. Like, do you go for Follow Me? Because I want to just go for Life Do right now, and then Infestation into Indity again. I, I don't think I played this mid-game perfectly. Like, I think instead of that first life do, it should have been a shelter into a life do. So, yeah, NDD makes the pivot. But now, whatever's coming in, it just gets infested, right? And yeah, it's going to be Armor Rouge. Okay, perfect. Excellent. But that's what I mean. I think I could have timed this a little bit better, so I could have knocked out both NDD and hands. But I wanted to get Gudra to plus six. Yeah, like, Drain Punch does 18 damage at this point, right? So, Hands isn't really too much of an issue. The downside is that, like, Light Screen has been fully stalled out. But, I think that's okay. There's Infestation onto Armor Rouge. Beautiful. And now, we just start body pressing everything. It's finally time. So, it took a long time to get here. But... Now I feel very comfortable about the spot that we're in. Okay. Um, I think here I want to body press Armor Rouge. They probably protect, right? But I think it's fine if they protect. If you protect, it means you're not getting damage off. And what is your Iron Hands really doing here? So I'm down to just body press Infestation. Like, I don't see how they're clearing this anytime soon. Okay, that's the solution. Endure. 
but it's a body press doesn't even bring it to endure rage it does activate the weak armor though so it gives them the speed boost but that's not really super relevant here quite frankly yeah and like this is what's so deadly about this combination you trap in a physical attacker and it just can't do anything against us right so this is effectively a 2v1 right now and I'm happy for Iron Hands to just be on the field for as long as it can be. The downside is a single Drain Punch crit would put us in a worse position. But at this point, I just don't think they can clear through this Toxapex. And we still have a Scarf Landorus waiting in the back as well, by the way. Yeah, so that's finally freed from Infestation. Now you can pivot this out, but I'm just going to go for Body Press onto you. And then Infestation again onto you. I actually don't... I, I think... Um, I rushed my moves that turn. I think body press onto hands was fine because armor rouge should faint from infestation here. So that was a slight misplay on my end, in my opinion. But I think we have a big enough lead where it doesn't really make too much of a difference. I think your best bet is probably to switch hands out right now. But it's like whatever switches in, whether it be Indity or Urshifu, just faints from not this turn, but next turn, thanks to Infestation. And Hands is not going to really win this endgame with Landra's Toxapex. So yeah, Hands does make the pivot here, but that's fine. It's going to be Indity coming out. Yep. It's okay with me. Like, Sub hasn't even been broken yet on our end, right? Yeah, they just go for Expanding Force. Gudra doesn't even fall under half from that. Breaks Toxapex is sub, finally. But now we just body press the KO Armor Rouge, Infestation onto the NDD, and this was a dream setup for this combination. They had basically no way to really deal with Toxapex once it got going. The Rocky Helmet will affect us again here, but it's fine. You also set up Psychic Terrain, so now you can't click Fake Out with your Iron Hands. And, uh... What's so nice is because it's Water Urshifu with Gudra being at plus six defense, like neither your Iron Hands nor your Urshifu should be able to deal with Gudra. NDD actually survives on one HP. So that's why I was saying, yeah, I think body pressing onto the NDD slot would have been better. Get a double knockout there, but it's fine. I think you got to bring out Urshifu and just go for helping hand close combat right now. Yeah. Uh, even if you help me hand close combat, I still win. If you follow me close combat... It's a little bit more interesting, I guess, but I think it's fine to actually just body press here and infestation. Yep, they go for helping hand. So you need to crit the Gudra, otherwise body press KOs you. Nice. In this game, we had Gudra and Toxapex out from what felt like, I don't remember exactly which turn, but they just never fainted. And it helped that basically, you know, they had the Iron Hands. But that's what makes this combo so deadly, right? We've seen a fair amount of Iron Defense Body Press users. Komuo won a regional championship in this regulation E format. But Infestation, Toxapex has not been added to the mix. And what made this game so much harder for my opponent was the inability to switch out. So, Hands comes back out. You have to be really patient with this team, though, right? Because Toxapex essentially will never deal that much damage, and you also can't really switch it out because it breaks the infestation. But, yeah. I felt really confident in this game, knowing that I had Landorus in the back as well as a late-game closer. Um, but I think I could have improved my mid-game play a little bit when we had the NDD and the Iron Hands trapped in. I don't think my sequencing was perfect there. And playing with this team, playing perfectly with this team, I think is actually incredibly difficult because there's so many things to keep track of. But that game was basically a perfect demonstration of what this team can do. And we were able to basically make it really difficult for our opponent to ever really put that much pressure against us. The scary thing is, with this being Sapsip or Gudra, we're at risk of critical hits. And so a single critical hit could have dramatically changed the outcome of that. But fortunately, with no crits co coming out from those couple turns, we were in good shape. And I figured even if Gudra went down, Landris plus Toxapex was a really good combination. Uh, but it would take a little bit more time, and uh, Landris faints a little bit easier, obviously, relative to the Toxapex. But yeah, this is what this combination can do. All right, Tornadus, Heatran, Iron Hands, Ferigraph, Fluttermane, and Urshifu. Hmm. Ferigraph is interesting. I think trapping things in with Toxapex is very appealing to me here. I'm even thinking about potentially leading it. 
But I think Graham Goudreau works here. Graham Goudreau. I like hands a lot here with AV, I think. Hands Toxapex. If they didn't have Tornadus, I think I'd feel a lot more confident in bringing the Landorus. And I think Sinistra is actually quite good here. Yeah, you can make a good argument for it. Uh, the theory behind Sinistra is that it can calm mind in front of things like Iron Hands as well as Ferrigraph. If it's Water Urshifu, we match it pretty well as well. But I don't love Sinistra into Tornadus. So, let's see. I think Grim Gudra is pretty solid here, though. And if they mislead and bring things like Ferrigraph, we can punish them really heavily immediately. But it's going to be Flutter Torn. Okay, I'm totally okay with this. I think this is just a... Light screen into Heavy Slam. I think if you're my opponent, you should probably pivot Flutter out into Heatran and then taunt into Gudra. They're already pivoting out, so let's see. That's for a graph. Okay. Yep. Nice play. I don't mind it too much, though, honestly, because you're still not really threatening Gudra right now. And I get my light screen up. Rocky Helmet. Okay, that's good to confirm. It's actually a really big item to see there, because it means you don't do as much damage. We're actually in a decent spot to just stay in an attack with Grimmsnarl right now, honestly. Like, I'm down to Spirit Break into Tornadus and Heavy Slam into it. Yeah, they just go for Bleakwind. Gudra dodges it. Decent damage on a Grim. It's actually more than I would have expected given the light screen, so it's good to confirm. Heavy Slam does a very good chunk there. We double up onto the Tornadus. Sick. They just Dazzling Gleam. Nice. Yeah, I'll gladly take that turn. Like, your Taunt on Gudra is going to wear off at some point, right? So I will happily trade right now with you. I think my main question is whether or not the... Tornadus considers switching out right now. Because I could Spirit Break, whatever is coming in. You know I have Heavy Slam, so I'm actually thinking about Body Press Spirit Break here. Which would punish anything else switching in really heavily. They might just be content Bleak Winding. But I'm down to potentially make a read here. Okay, they just stay in. That's fine. The only downside here is that uh, Body Press isn't going to KO Torn, so it means that uh, Spirit Break doesn't get redirected into Ferrograph. But I think in this position, it's worth going for a play like that. Because if they switch in Heatran or Urshifu, like, I just punish them so heavily. And I don't really lose too much from this, right? Like, the downside is Ferrograph isn't at minus one special attack. But that's okay. The, the critical thing here is that, like, we've stalled out our Taunt. Gudra still hasn't really taken that much damage. I've confirmed that your Furigraph is not very offensive either. So, all of that is good news for us. They just bring Fluttermane back out, okay? I mean, I've set up my light screen, so... Yeah. I think here I don't mind switching into Toxapex, just because I might be able to set up another light screen with Grimmsnarl later on in this battle. I'm just going to Heavy Slam Fluttermane. I feel like, uh, you know, I think, now I see what they're trying to do. Uh, I think this is going to be Fairy Terra Flutter Helping Hand from Frigoraph. Okay, they did not do that at all, and I think that is really bad news for them. This is a Gudra Masterclass. Like, this Pokemon doesn't necessarily need to set up to get going, and it's so anti-meta in beating Fluttermane specifically, so... They get a crit, but that's fine. I've already knocked out two big threats. Your Ferrigraph is not really doing much, and I can just click Infestation in this endgame. Okay, and they bring out the Heatran, which is fine. Yeah, at this point, we've got Iron Hands as well, which is really good as a closer. I'm happy to go for Terra here. Terra, Infestation, into the 
Heatran slot. We still have a turn of light screen too, yeah. Terra, Infestation, and Life Dew. This is why I wanted to conserve Grimmsnarl, by the way, because I'll be able to just set up another light screen. And with another set of light screen, I just don't think my opponent can handle late game Toxapex at this point. Unless you're specifically Terra Fairy Heatran with Terra Blast. They just earth power into Toxapex. Beautiful. That did 30 damage. Gudra gets life due up. So our recovery just continues. Yeah, and they Psychic. Beautiful. Ooh, they do get a special defense drop, though. Okay, that special defense drop makes this a lot more interesting. Because uh, it means you actually do pretty meaningful damage. Not the best time to get a special defense drop, but when you click Earth Power and Psychic, the odds of one of those two getting a drop are pretty high, so it's not really shocking. Can't be too upset by something like that. Light Screen does wear off critically. I think here I'm happy to Baneful Bunker, though. And Life Dew. I probably should switch out the um, Toxapex at some point, but I don't want to give up the trap right now. They Earth Power and a Gudra, but we survive. Great. Yeah, and I just Life Dew. Like, at this point, the infestation damage just keeps ticking up, right? And even though you got that special defense drop, like, Toxapex is basically at almost full HP now. Uh, the debate, though, is should I switch this next turn? They're also not going for Terra, which I think is questionable because I do have Body Press, so I can just Body Pressure Heatran. Mm, man, that special defense drop actually does concern me a little bit. I think recover here and body press is fine, though. Okay, they finally tear up. Uh, that's a little frustrating that I couldn't punish their lack of Terra earlier, but nicely done. Probably fairy. Yeah. Ah, that would have been sick to read and then just heavy slam into Heatran. Okay, but they are power Gudra, which is fine. Yep. Nice Terra. How much does Gleam do is the main question. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, now I bring out the Grim Snarl critically. And with Grim Snarl, I just set up Light Screen. Okay, infestation continues to tick down. Oh, it's buried. Okay, wait, that actually adds a couple more turns. Hold on. This game is not over. This game is not over by any means. Ah, oh, like, I actually feel like I should switch Toxapex out, which feels really bad. But I think the special defense drop is actually a huge deal, so I'm going to switch it out in light screen. I wasn't expecting Citrus on Heatran either. Terra Fairy Citrus, hmm. Okay. Critically though, we get another light screen up, so that puts us in good shape. Okay, nice, they flash cannon. And then Gleam probably. Perfect. Nice. Hands comes in and takes very little damage. I was mainly worried about Hands just eating up a lot more damage than I would have liked there. But now Toxapex comes out and we have reset that special defense drop. So that's big. Perfect. Can't fake out because of Frigograph. I'm happy to just wild charge here. And... I w I'm thinking about splitting my damage here. Because they can just Psychic into hands. Yeah, I'll target for a graph. Because I can see Heatran protecting. Yeah, exactly. 
And I just want guaranteed damage right now on the board. I don't think this will do more than half, though. Yeah. AV plus the uh, light screen is just so good. Okay. This is pretty scary, though, honestly, because of that Citrus Berry. Them having Rocky Helmet is also quite a big deal because it means I actually take chip damage. You can Psychic Earth Power Hands now. I think with Hands, I want to just double up into Heatran. So Wild Charge and Infestation now into Heatran. Yep, the Earth Power. You should Earth Power Psychic here, but I don't think that even KOs. Yeah, nice. Sweet. That should win us the game, I think. Yep. Because uh, two ticks of Infestation knock out Heatrans. There's one after this turn, and then I just Baneful Bunker and you faint. But... It took a little bit more work than I expected to get to this end game. Like I thought it was basically just guaranteed to be over uh, as soon as we were four and two, uh, but they did a good job of holding on to their terror on Heatran, and the special defense drop made things a little bit more challenging for me. But yeah, this is what Toxapex does best. So I am happy to Baneful Bunker, Heatran faints, and Furgraph's not going to win a one v one against Toxapex, even if you crit your Dazzling Gleams a couple times. Like I'm just too bulky, so. It's the dream scenario for Toxapex, but took a little bit of work to get here. Unfortunately, no Terra Blast. That would have been really scary, but that's pretty rare on non-assault vest sets. Because you're on a run, Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power. Magma Storm is something people are using more of as well. Uh, and yeah, the Citrus added a lot more drama to this game because it gave them a couple more turns to work with, right? Without Citrus, that Heatran just faints a lot sooner. But... I think the problem for my opponent is Foregraph is just not a very valuable Pokemon for them in this matchup. So, I'm happy to just recover here. Single target Gleam. It's not bad damage. They're obviously trying to stall out my light screen right now. But I get recover off. More infestation damage. And they faint after this final turn. Light screen does wear off. We just Baneful Bunker. Yep, and they realize that. So, this is what Toxapex can do, folks. This one was interesting mainly because it came out early, but then, like, we were kind of in an awkward spot because of that special defense drop, and I just figured there was not much my opponent could do to beat Toxapex in the end game, and so I figured I'd rather just switch out and get rid of the special defense drop because even a single special defense drop adds up very, very quickly. Um, and I'd say fortunately it ended up paying off for us, but this Pokemon can be so darn good in these end game scenarios. All right, I just featured this team on the channel. It reached rank number one on the ladder and it has a lot of fun sets like Poison Tyra Landorus, Throat Spray Phrygraph, Booster Bundle Encore, as well as Dark Sash or Shifu. So, the number of special attackers actually makes it pretty challenging because this team is fairly physically oriented. But we've got Light Screen. I think um, Encore Bundle is actually going to be the biggest thing to watch out for. And I think Lando Eye is actually re really good here for them, too. Hmm. I'm actually... Not sure I, how I easily deal with Lando I. Calm Mind Sinistra is intriguing. I could Dragon Terra Toxapex too. Maybe I'll do that. Mm. I'm gonna go Gudra Sinistra in the back. You know, actually, now that I think about it, mm, I think one of my win conditions was Choice Scarf Lando T. Flying Terra and then Terra Blasting everything. But let's see. It's going to be Furograph and Heatran. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's interesting mainly because you can Psychic into us, but I would expect a Hyper Voice on turn one. I'm happy to Light Screen here. Who would I rather trap in right now? Or just get residual damage, I guess, is the question. Probably for a graph. Well, actually, Furgraph's not really too much of a problem for 
the Gudra. So I'm going to Light Screen in Infestation Heatran. One of the downsides is I can't Parting Shot or Taunt next turn. Okay, it's going to be Earth Power here. Psychic as well? All right, Hyper Voice. That makes sense. Uh, I think I'm going to consider Baneful Bunker Spirit Break. Then Terra Dragon Recover. Um, so I'm going to Spirit Break in a Fear Graph here. Baneful Bunker. <clears throat> it honestly may have been worth it to just have Terra right from the start. But I do think conserving Terra for Gudra makes some sense in this one. The main thing to worry about is Bundle in the back. Yeah, the Heat Wave here. Okay. We're faster, which is actually really nice. Curious if they want Psychic or Hyper Voice here. Psychic, perfect. Okay. Excellent. That's huge. That is huge. I mainly wonder if they're going to Heat Wave again in this spot. Because you could Flash Cannon us right now. So I could switch out into Gudra. I don't hate that option. But I think it's fine to just stay in. I'm, I'm actually down to just, yeah. Spirit Break into Heatran. Do I really care about Heatran's damage post Terra? Not really. Yeah, I'll Spirit Break for a graph. Terra, recover. I think here, if you're my opponent, it makes sense to just Flash Cannon and Psychic. But with Light Screen and with getting uh, me getting them back to neutral, I don't think for a graph's that much of an issue. You have Helping Hand as an option as well. But Heatran being trapped and its stats being lowered is helpful. And okay, they're going to Heat Wave. Cool. Perfect. So I get another Spirit Break onto Fear Graph. Great damage. Perfect. And they Psychic as well. Amazing. Yeah, and that does 25 damage. So we had to be a little bit creative in this game because of their lead. Blocking what Toxapex normally wants to do. But this infestation is putting in so much work for us right now. I think part of the debate is whether or not I want to cycle Grim out and then back in. Because, for example, I could switch in Sinister or Gudra right now. I don't hate the Gudra switching, personally. And then Infestation into Freograph. And then I can actually just go for Body Press Infestation, even maybe angle for a double knockout. Or Recover. Uh, but I think part of what's really been huge for us in this game is, like, Infestation is so nice because not only do you do the residual damage, but you actually trap your opponents in as well. And when you have something as bulky as Toxapex, it's hard for them to, you know, easily knock things out. Yeah, so Heat Wave comes out here. And just Hyper Voice. Look how little damage we're taking right now. This is nuts. Infestation on the Freograph now. Perfect. I think my main concern is uh, Dark Urshifu, because I think a late game Dark Urshifu from there and actually still poses a lot of problems for me. So that's what I want to play around. But Infestation is just adding up so quickly right now. Uh, I think I want to take this time to recover for sure with Toxapex. Maybe I just go for the double knockout. I could Shelter here as well, but... I don't know, I expect Bundle or Urshifu in the back from there, and personally. So I think it's better this turn to actually just, uh... Oh, I do have Sub. Hmm. I could Life do Sub, no? Okay, I actually like that as an option a lot. They go for Helping Hand, which is fine. Like, Helping Hand Earth Power isn't gonna KO either. Yeah, it's just onto Gudra. Light Screen is putting in so much value for us right now. So Gudra gets Life Dew up. Nice. Heal back. 
Toxapex subs. And we heal back with leftovers. I don't know. Maybe it was worth it to just get the double knockout that turn. Maybe it was worth it to recover. Not 100% sure what was the best play there. But Heatran has just taken so much infestation damage throughout the course of this game. And Freograph finally faints as well. So it's been a good start. But I think these two aren't really the major threats to my team. I think Urshifu, Landris, Bundle are all really scary. So we're not out of the woods by any means yet. I'm mainly curious what they bring out right now. It's going to be Landris. Okay. I'm all right with that. Yeah, I'm really all right with that because I think I can just Infestation Landris now. Um, Do I want to switch into Sinistra? They're going to Sandseer Storm and Heat Wave maybe. I do like the idea, I think, of switching into Sinistra here. The alternative is just giving up Gudra. So I get a free switch into Sinistra. Don't think that's the worst idea either. But I think I'm just going to go in right now. And Infestation. I don't know. I think it was not a bad idea to give up Gudra. So then I Infestation Landorus, bring out Grimmsnarl, and then Light Screen. But I like the idea of just getting Hospitality off here. And if they don't click Heat Wave here, that's also really bad for them. But, yep, it's Earth Power into that slot. Perfect. Nice. They double Earth Powered. Perfect. That doesn't even activate our Citrus Berry. Oh, my goodness. And we get Infestation at Landris. Toxapex has inf infested literally everything in this game so far on their side. Which has been amazing for us. Okay. Heatran is freed, so it survives for a turn, but that's fine. Uh, I'd love to get Light Screen up with Grim again. I think in this spot, I'm okay going for Shadow Ball, get some chip onto Landorus, and then Infestation into Heatran. Alternatively, I think giving up Gudra might be worth it. But it's decent into Bondo, I guess, in the end game. Yeah, I'll stay in. Shadow Ball, Infestation. Okay, they go for Sansir Storm, which makes a lot of sense. It's going to connect. We take the sub damage, does break our sub. Citrus Berry activates. I mean, I assume you should Heat Wave here. Or Magma Storm. Yeah, they're going to Magma Storm. Okay. Uh, that was a little bit risky from there, and I think if that misses, but fortunately for them, it doesn't miss. I, I don't know. I think it may have been worth it to give up Gudra in that spot, now that I think about it. Okay. More Infestation damage. He trend faints. So now I go out into Grimmsnarl. And with Grimmsnarl, we have late game parting shot pressure, which is awesome. I'm hoping their last one's Rillaboom. Because I think if it's Rillaboom, then Toxapex just really hard wins. But yeah, it's going to be Bundle. Bundle, Bundle, Bundle makes this very interesting. Because you have Encore. So I'd expect them to just sand steer storm here. Like I still have to deal enough damage to win this game is the problem because I went with like full stall in this match. Um, yeah, bundle with encore is actually such a big problem because like not being able to switch around my moves uh, changes this a lot. I think I'm going to click. Oh, I do have taunt, which prevents your encore. But they might just freeze-dry me is the problem here. Okay, I went Light Screen Infestation on the bundle. They went right for Encore, though. Mm. 
And Sandster Storm doesn't miss either. It's a lot of damage. Okay, that's not good. I think with that, they're actually in a pretty commanding spot then. I just didn't want to go for... I mean, like... Uh, being Encored into Infestation actually isn't the end of the world. The problem is I think Landers now just does enough damage to everything across the board, right? You can just freeze dry here. Plus Sandsteer Storm. Um, and we haven't gotten any misses from Sandsteer, which is part of the problem. I guess though Gudra in a 1v1 could theoretically win, but now they should just freeze dry Earth Power into the Toxapex slot. I'm going to Heavy Slam into Landorus. And Infestation. If somehow, though, Toxapex survives the turn and we get the Heavy Slam combo, we could win, but I think this KOs. Oh, it doesn't. Did they Earth Power? Oh, that still KOs us, though. Okay. Yeah, Landers was actually so good for them in this matchup. I needed to, yeah, get my Heavy Slam off there. Ah, Landers was so clutch. I, it's hard, though, because it's like I could bring my Landers T. Or my Iron Hands. Um, I think I should have given up Gudra earlier in this game. But, I, yeah. So that I could have, like, swapped Sinisha out and back in. Uh, the reality, though, is that I think, like, Landers and Bundle match up super well into us. And I can't really comfortably bring in Iron Hands or Landers T. Because, like, one of that duo puts in a lot of work. And the way they conserved it was really well done as well. So, yeah. I think part of the problem is... Ground type damage is just pretty good across the board. And uh, Encore is an amazing move to have as well. I don't know if Taunt would have changed anything in that spot, though, quite frankly. Because then you still just KO me with Freeze Dry. Yeah, like, they drew, they were just in a really good offensive spot with Bundle plus um, the Landers in the end game. So, I think the mid game I kind of probably played a little bit better. Like, when I got the double Earth Power out, I could have switched Sinistra out into the Gudra. Because I think one thing I could have cons uh, considered is saving Sinistra just to redirect like an Encore in the late game. The problem is that, like I was relying almost solely on infestation damage to win this game. And that was a pretty big issue. Okay, we've got Cress, Hands, Indity Armor Rouge, Blood Moon, Chi Yu. A lot of fire types. More Indity Armor Rouge. Hmm. Could this be a game for Calm Mind Sinistra? I think so. I think I can go Grimmsnarl Sinistra. I don't think Gudra makes that much sense here, personally, since they have so many special attackers. And I think I want Toxapex and Iron Hands. I guess Gudra is still interesting for life, dude, though. Maybe I will bring Gudra. So, I think Calm Mind Sinistra is excellent here, but basically it's never going to deal that much damage. Even at plus six, we wouldn't, we shouldn't expect it to get big knockouts. I think Toxapex may have been worth considering here, but if I lead it into NDD Armor Rouge, it's a complete nightmare, so I don't want to do that. Otherwise, I think Blood Moon is a really big issue. And part of the reason for that is because ground type damage is just really good into this team, especially into Gudra and Toxapex. So that's what I'm worried about the most. But I'm thinking Sinistra Grim, if you go Iron Hands Cresselia, which is kind of the basic Trick Room setup, we'll be in really good shape. Chiyu lead here could be scary though, but it is Hands Crest. Nice. Okay. Yeah, this is, I think, going to be a taunt into Calm Mind. Most players are going to click Fake Out on a Grim here. Some might switch out into Blood Moon immediately. No Fake Out. I was hoping to get value out of our Covert Cloak here, but it's still fine. Are they Mentor Orb as well? Ah, uh, wow. Yeah, that's what can be tricky about Best of One. But I don't regret making that play. That probably means I'm getting Heavy Slam, though, I think, if I had to guess. Oh. Well, that's not good. Hmm. So I'll tell you what, here's what's interesting. Even with Belly Drum, 
Uh, I have Sinistra. So... Because you're normally going to run a fighting and an electric type attack. So Sinistra doesn't actually really care for either of those too much. Uh, it's the fact that they also had the uh, Mentorb. Because if, if they didn't have Mentorb, it actually would be totally fine. I could just Spirit Break and Macha Gotcha. Um, I could Parting Shot here. I'm honestly thinking about Spirit Break and Rage Powder. Uh, but I guess, like, you have Thunder Punch. You probably have Helping Hand. I might just get swept right now, honestly. I just went for Spirit Break Macha Gotcha. I think they, yeah, Helping Hand, Thunder Punch, Sinistra. Is that KO? Oh, we survived. That's huge. That's so huge. Okay, nice. I don't think we KO in return, though, is the problem. But let's see. I maybe should have gone Shadow Ball into that slot instead. I think Shadow Ball actually would have gone in the KO. So, not the best play on my end. Yeah, I don't expect this to knock out. Or we can just crit. <laughs> uh, I think I needed that crit, though, for sure. So, Shadow Ball would have been a better play there. And Burn as well. This game has just been nuts already. Wow, jeez. Um... I, I think part of the thing is I was thinking Iron Hands might consider a terror in that position to get around Machu Gacha specifically. And I was like, is there any chance you're Terra Water, for example? But I think it's better to just click Shadow Ball there anyway. Uh, Sparrow Break was such a critical move there. And we end up escaping with a lot more than I would have expected to. So I'm very happy about this end outcome. And they actually bring out Armor Rouge. Okay. Armor Rouge is fine because I can just light screen now. Terra Fire and Calm Mind. Yeah, I think the lack of Terra and Iron Hands definitely punished them. The crit was lucky. I'm wondering how things would have played out without the crit. Um, it also did do decent damage to Cresselia, so maybe it actually knocks out Iron Hands. I think I'm just so used to Salt Vest Iron Hands that, like, I don't know any non-AV Iron Hands damage calcs, basically. Even though you would base... It's, it's, like, pretty easy to calculate, right? You just take the regular AV calc and uh, in increase the damage. Uh, but it's just, like, so rare to fight against non-assault vest Iron Hands these days. Crest switches, which makes me think it's arm- uh, sorry, Indy coming out. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know if this Terra was really that worth it, though, on my end. Like... But I don't know. Like, with Light Screen and multiple Calm Minds, how do you actually deal with Sinistra at this point? I think one thing to be worried about, though, is Toxapex is going to provide us very little value. It's just going to fall to an expanding force. But we're also faster than Armourish under Trick Room, so that's huge. The main thing to think about is that I can't Shadow Ball very easily, but now I'm at plus two special defense and I've set up Light Screen, so you shouldn't really deal that much damage. And Grim is completely immune to it. Yeah, that did 48 damage, and that was Life Orb too. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just Spirit Break then in Macha Gacha here. This is a good example of a game, though. Like, I'm going to do that damage calc against Iron Hands after this game because I really don't know it off the top of my head, but I think Shadow Ball would have just been more consistent for us. That being said, I because of Macha Gacha, we heal back so much. Armor is actually pivots out. Interesting. So, I think if you're making that play, you're probably going to try to reset your own Trick Room with Indidi, but it's like, Cresselia and Indidi are both so passive for my opponent, so I'm just getting so much free damage right now. Nice. I mean, we could have considered another Calm Mind there, but I'm happy to just get more damage off, and we actually get another critical hit. I, I didn't want that crit, though, because this actually knocks out Cresselia, so it gives them a free switch and immediately back out into Armor Rouge, but... Yeah, it's fine. Like, Trigram is reversed, but I'm at full HP again with Sinistra. This is a wild game. Anyway, the point I was trying to make, though, is that, like, uh, I do think that that crit on Iron Hands may have changed things dramatically, and I had a better play that turn, which I recognized, which was Shadow Ball. So, you know, even when you win games in Pokemon, you should think about what you can do better. 
Three turns of light screen, three turns of psychic train, trick room was reversed. Got Toxapex and Gudra in the back. I think here I'm happy to just spirit break into Armor Rouge and Machigacha. Alright, they're gonna finally Terra. Psychic Terra, maybe? Okay, if you have Terra Blast, this is really interesting. Yeah, Helping Hand Terra Blast, maybe? That's cool. Wow, does this even KO, though? I honestly don't expect it to. This is Calm, Sinistra, Max HP, 156 Special Defense. That didn't even do half our health. Oh my goodness. This is just gonna now one-shot Armor Rouge, I feel like, right? <gasps> this is... I don't think I could have had a more satisfying game with Sinistra, but we got quite lucky in this game, right? Like... Crit onto Iron Hands, burn on a Cresselia, crit on a Cresselia, and not a single Macha Gotcha miss. That being said, I don't think most of that was relevant. The main thing was the crit onto Iron Hands, which was incredibly relevant. Like, I, you know, I don't really care about the burn or the crit on Crest, but uh, once again, the crit onto Hands was such a big deal. So let's do that damage calc. I think, yeah, once again, just playing against Belly Drum Iron Hands, not something I would have expected. I was thinking they were going to Terra that turn for sure, so I was like, I might as well just get some recovery at least with Macha Gotcha, but... I didn't even know if Sinistro would survive that turn, but my goodness, Sinistro was so, so unbelievably clutch for us in this game. Uh, but let's pull up that damage calc. So the answer to this question is that it very much depends on Iron Hands' EV spread. Macha Gacha against 84 HP, 252 special defense Iron Hands does 24 to 29%. Shadow Ball does a little bit more, as you can see, 33 to 39%. And Iron Hands was at around 30% right before the Macha Gacha came out. Now, if the Iron Hands has, like, no special defense investment, which I would be personally shocked by, this is really rare, but Macha Gacha then can just get the knockout, and of course Shadow Ball does even more damage. So, I still think Shadow Ball is definitely the right play in that spot, because Macha Gacha is just not a guaranteed KO if they're bulky, and I would expect most Iron Hands to be bulky. And part of the theory is if you're running Belly Drum, you don't need that much attack investment, because you would expect to get a lot of one-hit knockouts post-Belly Drum. It just so happens that we had a really bulky Sinistra that matched up really well specifically into that Iron Hands, but yeah, I think... We got lucky with the Macha Gacha. I think a crit or a burn there likely gets the knockout, but uh, Shadow Ball there just ensures us the knockout. And with Shadow Ball, like, the healing, of course, was really nice from that turn, but I'm not sure we necessarily needed it, especially because they had set up Trick Room and we were actually faster than their Indy and their Armor Rouge under Trick Room. So I'm going to be able to just keep healing up with Macha Gacha. But yeah, that crit alone just immediately sealed up the game because it not only got the knockout, but also healed us up a ton. And obviously my opponent couldn't respond. But yeah, I think Shadow Ball, if I, would re or if I were to replay that game, I would be clicking Shadow Ball there, uh, just knowing these damage calcs. Like the fact that uh, against the bulky Iron Hands, like we... Don't get the knockout with Macha Gacha is pretty concerning to me. And Shadow Ball here, even with no special attack investment, still does so much. And so, yeah, I would change my move to Shadow Ball there. But uh, that game showed just how clutch Calm Mind Sinistra can be. Okay, we've got Roaring Moon, Iron Hands, Chiyu, Weezing, Fluttermane, and Landris. I think Weezing definitely sticks out the most here. Being able to block Prankster is a little bit scary. That's probably what concerns me the most. I don't think too many of her abilities are actually that important other than Prankster. Toxapex is actually really interesting into Weezing because I can just Infestation into you. I like Gudra a lot here as well. So I'm thinking maybe Grimmsnarl, Toxapex, Gudra. I think I should be bringing one of Iron Hands and Landris to have a little bit more offense. And I think in this one, I mean, with Weezing, they do block Intimidate a little bit more. But I think Scarf Landers is still good here because it can pivot in and out. So this should be an interesting one. Um, I would love if they just led Weezing, honestly. But if not, like Grimmsnarl can start going for Light Screen or Parting Shot. Gudra is very good in this matchup. The main thing I think it has to watch out for is probably that Chiyu, but I can Water Terra to get around Fire-type attacks. That being said, Dark Pulse is still scary. And a Ghost Terra could be quite scary as well. So let's see. Chiyu Flutter lead. Okay, so super offensive. This is interesting, right? It's like, do you consider switching right out into the Weezing? 
Because what you could do is go into Weezing and then Moonblast Grimmsnarl. I'm going to click Infestation here into the Chiyu slot. And Light Screen. Because I think if Weezing were to switch, it would be on the Chiyu slot. But no switches here. Okay. Probably just a Fairy Terra immediately then. Oh no. It's going to be Terra on Chiyu into Ghost. Okay. That's interesting. I'm surprised they prioritize that so much, but that works for me. Uh, critically here, I get Light Screen up, so then Gudra can come out and potentially just click Heavy Slam onto Flutter next turn. It's probably just Dazzle Heat Wave then. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. You can see how well Toxapex tanks that. Doesn't even lose more than a third of its health. Cool. So I get Infestation into Chiyu. So now well, that's taking on a timer. I think with this, I mean, that felt like Specs damage. I'm personally happy to just bring out Guja right now. You can't Terra your Flutter, so I can just Heavy Slam that slot. So I'm thinking I go for Recover here, Water Terra, and then Heavy Slam. Flutter maybe switches out here is the thing, right? But that would be okay with me. And they stay in, which is fantastic, okay? Ideally, we just get the knockout on a Flutter here. Don't take too much damage. I think the main thing I'm worried about right now is getting flinched by Dark Pulse. But, yeah, I think Toxapex, now that I've set up Light Screen, is in a really nice spot. Yep, they just Gleam again. Perfect. Dark Pulse shouldn't KO either here, I don't think. And they click Heat Wave. Amazing. Look how little damage we're taking right now. So Gudra launches Heavy Slam into Flutter Main. That's a one-hit knockout. And that's one of the best things about Gudra and why it's a great anti-meta Pokemon. And critically here, Toxapex has soaked up all this damage. And a single recover heals almost all of it back. Look at that. Gudra's also got my leftovers here. And this is definitely like the scariest duel on my opponent's side. Infestation con damage continues to tick down as well. Uh, and now that they can't Terra, I think late game Scarf Landris is also quite nice. The only downside is I could have played to an end game where Landris like Terra's and Terra blasts everything, but I think I feel okay going for the Terra with the Gudra there. So they're gonna bring out their Landris. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, in this scenario, what do I want to do? Because I could pivot my own Toxapex out into Landris. One thing to notice that Gudra's not really doing too much here, though, with Body Press, right? Honestly, I don't hate going for... Uh, maybe I want to recover this turn. Switch Gudra out into Landorus. To soak up damage. Then what I can do is, like, Stomping Tantrum their Chi Yu. And then Infestation their Landorus. If Chi were to protect here, that'd be even better, but I doubt it protects. Yeah, they just launched Stomping here. <laughs> Look how little damage we take. Yeah, and they Dark Pulse into that slot, which is fine. The bulk is just incredible right now. Like, we're taking less than 50%. Toxapex heals, and you know, the Infestation damage just keeps ticking down on Chi Yu, right? So it's caught in a really awkward spot. Now in this position, I'm happy to click Infestation into Landorus. Stomping Tantrum into Chiyu. Yep, Landorus switches out, but now whatever's switching in is caught into an awkward spot, right? It's going to be Roaring Moon. That's perfectly fine. Booster Energy, presumably. Let's see if it's Attack or Speed. I'd rather see Speed here. Oh, great. Okay, that's awesome. Nice. Nice. We get Stomping into the Chiyu, and that's just a knockout. Perfect. That's what this team can do. Like, Infestation just adds up the residual damage. And so, like, now Rory Moon is just going to keep taking residual as well, right? I think the one awkward thing is I probably have to pivot this Landorus out, but uh, Rory Moon now is taking pretty meaningful damage. I don't think you even get the knockout onto Toxapex with a double up, and if it's Scarf Landorus, it's like, do you really commit to locking into Stomping? Because if so, you just can't hit my Landorus at this point, right? So they bring out Landorus. 
Could be Dragon Dance Ray Moon, but with it being Speed Booster, it's not that scary. I think I'm happy to just Baneful Bunker this turn, switch out into Gudra. Toxapex was amazing in this game. Being able to soak up so much damage, heal back up, and then get Chiyu in a range where my landers can get the knockout. Like, all of those were instrumental in uh, this lead that we have right now. And this is also just a great position for Gudra in the endgame where we're up against so many physical attackers, right? Okay, Rory Moon Tailwinds, but I don't really care about the speed that you have from that. I wonder if they just Earthquake here. Okay, it's Rock Slide. I think seeing Rock Slide more or less confirms to me that you are Choice Carved, and so that's fine with me. I don't think you can really beat Toxic Hex easily at this point. So... From this spot... You can pivot either Pokemon into Landorus. Light Screen wears off, but we timed it basically perfectly. Uh, I think Toxapex into Landorus and then just Body Pressing. Roaring Moon is one option. I'm down for that. I mean, that would potentially just win us the game right now. I think with Intimidate, even if I get flinched or crit once on Gudra, it's okay. I think like Toxapex legitimately could 1v2 this scenario right now. But I want to make sure I get my first Intimidate off here. Okay, they go for knockoff, so no leftovers, but that's fine. Yeah, we'll survive Rock Slide. Maybe Life Dew is better here, actually, but no flinch. Failed to knock out Roaring Moon, though, which actually makes this a little bit more interesting. Okay. Two turns of Tailwind. I actually do want to pivot back on into Toxapex then. Yeah, I was expecting that to get the knockout. Because if we get the knockout there, then it's like a Landorus 1v3. But now Roaring Moon actually can be a little bit annoying with knockoff. And... I mean, you're going to knock off and Rock Slide here. Gujra survives that, by the way. So I'm happy to switch out into Toxapex and then Body Press into Roaring Moon. Yeah, like, I think they're going to need infinite flinches to actually win this one. Even though we didn't get that knockout, I still feel like I'm in great shape. Because right now you have to double up on Gujra if you want to even knock that out in the first place. But yeah, they're going to commit knockoff on a Toxapex. So no more Binding Band, but that's fine. Do you get a flinch or crit here onto Gujra? No flinch. Perfect. Excellent. So now we KO Roaring Moon. Now I just pivot Gudra out into Landorus and Infestation. Yeah, and my opponent recognizes they are basically locked. So Toxapex putting in so much work for us in this battle. Gudra as well. The key thing, I think, with this team is you had to deal with those special attackers. But because my opponent led Flutter Chiyu early and committed their Ghost Terra with Chiyu, I think getting that one-hit knockout, like, the turn where... I got Heavy Slam into Flutter, and Toxapex was able to recover, and I watered Terra the Gudra. Like, I felt like I had the game, not 100% won, but I'd be in a really commanding position, and we were able to secure the victory after that. Uh, I hope that it was Tailwind, Speed Booster Roaring Moon, rather than a Dragon Dance variant. Dragon Dance, I think, could be just a little bit more annoying, because, you know, this team is a little bit more passive, so you can spend a couple turns clicking Dragon Dance, but with it being the Speed Booster set, we just didn't have to worry about too much damage coming out from that side, so uh, that made a big difference in this game as well. Wow, that is a regular Nine Tails, which sets up the sun for a lot of Protosynthesis Pokemon here. Rory Moon Flutter, Rillaboom, Bundle, and Sandy Shock. So four Paradox Mons. Water Terra is really good on Gudra, but I do have to worry about Encore as well as Freeze Dry from Bundle. Hands feels pretty good in this one, although I guess they do have Sandy Shocks. I want to lead Grim to put on pressure immediately. I don't hate Grim Gudra. I'm debating if Sinisha makes that much sense in this matchup. Also, what if I went Grim Toxapex low key? Because, like, it's pretty disruptive. I'm down. Gudra in the back. I think it's probably Landorus, but I don't know, like, Hands actually has a really decent matchup here. It is Grass Terra, though, which is a little bit awkward because it's weak to a bunch on their side. 
Mm, my fear is with Protosynthesis, they're going to outpace me with Scarf Lando anyway, so I actually think I will bring out Iron Hands. So this is a weird one. I'm not used to playing against Manual Sun from Ninetales. Normally, it's something like Torkoal, and I think Ninetales is scarier than Torkoal because of the speed advantage. So, let's see. I'd love to use Toxapex to just trap things in early, especially if they led Rillaboom. Ninetales Flutter, okay. Uh, definitely a decent opportunity to just light screen. But the question is what I want to do with Toxapex. I think it's probably fine to just Infestation Flutter. Light screen and Infestation here. Trap you in. If you knock out Grimmsnarl, then the Gudra just comes out Water Terra Heavy Slam KO. Yep. So they get the knockout there, but that's fine. What does uh, Ninetales go for? Okay, your Life Orb. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> that is... I think manual sleep from hypnosis here is a complete disaster for us to run into. They should just hypnosis the Gudra right now. But I'm going to just heavy slam here. Infestation. Uh, yeah, this is like in best of one. It's not something I would have expected. My solution around that actually would have been to click taunt, but... Ninetales is just not a very meta Pokemon to begin with. I'm actually curious about what its main moves even really are. Moonblast is less than half. Let's see if Hypnosis hits. Oh, they actually opt for Overheat and Gudra dodges it. That also works. Okay. I could have Water Terra there. Water Terra would have ensured that I survived Overheat. Um, I'm curious about... the. I, I like thought I would survive anyway there, but um, the fact that it missed just makes it easier for us. So that was a big, big miss. Ninetales is a pretty volatile Pokemon with its moves. Overkey and Hypnosis, both moves that are inaccurate. But that was a huge dodge for us. Definitely quite lucky. Sandy Shocks comes out now. Yeah, all these special attackers makes this really challenging. Mm. Ugh, there's really no easy solution here, huh? I'm going to Dragon Terra this. Body press, Dragon Terra, Infestation. I'm hoping they split their attacks here. They Earth Power into Toxapex, Overheat into Gudra. That would be my dream. And then I get the Body Press up, Wake Up, and Infestation. That would be huge for us. Ah, it's going to be Gravity. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Really cool combo here. Um, yeah, the solution against this would have been leading like something like Grim plus Gudra and then Taunt. Let's see if Toxapex wakes up here. That'd be huge. Okay, it does manage to wake up. So we get Infestation off. This next turn is interesting. Do you just Earth Power Gudra? Hypnosis into Toxapex? I'd like to body press you. Infestation you. Yep, Earth Power. We survive thanks to Light Screen. Special defense drop, not the best to see. Yeah, in this position, like, I just let them hit the Hypnosis. Because if I Baneful Bunker, yeah, I avoid a turn of being put to sleep. But it's not like I really put on much pressure anyway. And Gudra does critically actually wake up. So that's the thing. They have to get some good sleep rolls as well, and now that um, Sandy Shocks is actually really on a timer, right? So, we've gotten pretty lucky this game for sure, like Overheat Miss into some early wake-ups as well, but with that, Infestation continues to tick down. Yeah, I give up Gudra here for sure. And just Infestation into the... Ninetales again. So they're going to earth power to KO Gudra. I get Iron Hands in this next turn, so that does pressure with Fake Out. 
I wonder if they hypnosis here to cover for a switch, but nope, it's just overheat, okay. It's actually a pretty big deal that you clicked overheat there, because it means now that Ninetales just doesn't put on any offensive pressure at all. But it's a Jack pack, very cool. That a Jack pack works against them, though, in my opinion, especially if I wake up. Because you don't put on hypnosis pressure anymore. It's bundle, okay. I have never seen a team get so much value out of Protosynthesis before. And Toxapex wakes up. This Toxapex is so clutch today. I've gotten super lucky in this game. Uh, part of it is just Ninetales is not a common Pokemon, and I was not very well equipped to deal with it. Protosynthesis wears off. I think now my main question is this bundle moveset, because Encore is something that's very common. And Light Screen wears off as well. So I'm worried about Encore, personally. Two turns of gravity left. I mean, both of these are bound. This is essentially going to faint after this turn. I think bundle protecting here makes sense. I don't want to fake out and get Encored into it, though, so I, I want to lock into Drain Punch here, I think. Uh, I'm going to Drain Punch and Infestation. Ah, oh, is it Ghost Terra? I should have Wild Charged then, huh? Ah. Oh. I think Wild Charge there would have just won it for me, actually. I had not considered they had held onto their Terra this entire time. Oh, that's interesting, though. Okay, they protect. And freeze dry. Uh, it's a question of whether or not you have Encore now, is my question. Um. Yeah, I think the Protect on Sandy Shocks is unnecessary. I think you should always attack there. Because you know you're fainting from Infestation anyway, right? But I definitely should have Wild Charged over Drain Punch. I just didn't think about Terra there. And, like, the recovery isn't really that important. Because if we get Wild Charge then, it's enough damage where I think Bundle probably faints from one more, inf one more Infestation turn. Now my question is whether or not they have Encore. But with one more turn of gravity, you just put Iron Hands to sleep now. I'm going to Wild Charge, though, and Baneful Bunker. And if you have Encore here, I think you just win. So let's see. Okay, they do Freeze Dry. Because the thing is, Iron Hands can win a 1v1 against Ninetales from this spot. And the thing about using a fast sleep strategy like this is it's really volatile because it's like you bur your opponent's burn a turn to sleep immediately. So it's like, I can just wake up with hands this next turn, right? But yeah, I think clicking wild charge over drain punch would have actually just won us this game. So it's a shame I missed that in the moment and forgot about Terra. I'm going to wild charge and might as well go for the double here with Toxapex. <laughs> and it gets it. Oh my goodness. Okay. This Toxapex was on a mission, but see, this is a game where it's like I have to get a little bit lucky to win, but I didn't need to be in this position if I just played a little bit better earlier on. Uh, but if we wake up here, we actually just win the game off that, I think. Yeah, we don't take much damage from Ninetales at all. Okay, hands to stay asleep. So this is going to be quite the dramatic finish. Uh, now I'm willing to go for Recover. Because... I think there's a small world in which they protect their bundle here, and if they were to do that, they, that would be a throw. Oh, or they freeze dry hands. Wait, Heat Wave doesn't KO Toxapex, though, does it? <laughs> it gets a burn, but that's fine, because I have Recover. And Hands wakes up. I had no business winning this game, whatsoever. But uh, I think this endgame was a little bit suboptimally played by both of us. I think they should always be freeze drying into the Toxapex. And I think the Sandy Shocks wasted a turn as well. They should have just attacked that turn. And for me, I should have considered that Bundle could Ghost Terror and go for Wild Charge that turn. So, yeah. 
sometimes when you're playing against these weird strats, like it's you don't play perfectly because you're just a little bit thrown off guard. But I don't think Nine Tails wins at this point. Uh, it's just not never going to do enough damage. And Toxapex actually clutches this one out. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that game. That was nuts. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much as always for joining me. Really cool to be able to use a competitively viable team with Toxapex. And it honestly was amazing in a lot of the games that we had today. So yeah, thanks as always for joining me and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.